What's going on, guys? We are back for a week. The Coach's Corner is episode nine, and we are going to talk about how to start a fitness routine from scratch. Coach Malik. Ashley. <laughs> and we have a lot to talk about today, and we are excited for this episode. I think you guys get a lot out of it. And one of the first things was we wanted to see how we can make a episode that uh, a lot of people can take take from. So we th thought how to start a fitness routine would be a gr great place to start. And we have some tips for you. So Ashley, do you want to start with the first one? Yeah. yeah. Um. So this is for anybody who is literally like just walking into the gym. Like you are fresh. You this is what we're thinking. This is what our advice is to you. So um, I guess the first one would be like, how many times a week are you going to go exercise? We would say three to four times, right? Yep. They don't have to be two hour sessions, right? You're not going to necessarily get like a better better. You're not going to get better results because you're going to the gym for two hours. Yep. You could go to the gym with a plan, with an idea, three to four, three to four times a week for 45 minutes to an hour, 30 minutes to an hour and still get results. You just have to go with the plan. hundred percent. I think that's another thing people think they have to go to a gym for a certain amount of time, which I believe personal training sessions might have had something to do with that just because they were an hour. And so everyone just thinks I have to work out for an hour. Classes are usually an hour. You know, uh, something that my mom, so my mom started working out. Good job, mom, if you're watching this. But uh, what she did was look at your schedule, see when you have time. Like if you don't work out at all and you have time on Friday, you just have a little slot on Friday, going one time a week or four times a month or whatever four times 12 is a year, you know, it's a lot better than zero. So, yeah. so how many times should you work out a week? However much you can. So like, if you only can twice, then go twice. All right, I could fit three in. So she had like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but she went, she, you know, like you said, you don't have to go for an hour. She goes for like 15 minutes or like 20 minutes. So she'll go on the treadmill. So like walk and she's, I think she's starting to do the incline now, 15, 30, about 45 minutes a week. And that's 45 minutes more than she did before. Dude, I love that. Yeah. I literally love that. The props mom. And she's. <laughs> I believe 68. So no excuse on the age fitness level. She's always like, Oh, Malik, I can't do your videos. Cause you know, I can't work out, you know, but she's, she's doing it. So even just a treadmill walk. I honestly think that's so good because it, like you just said, it's better than zero doing nothing, but you can effectively go work out and get your body moving and do something. Okay. For 15 to 20 minutes. Like yeah. I, you could literally do a, like two sets of like yeah. weights. <laughs> yeah, that was the first one. How many times one? a week should you exercise? What number two is is what can you do? Right? Do, do you want to talk about that for a little bit? Yeah. So um that was it's actually a good segue because you're talking about your mom working out 15, 20 minutes. We're fitting it into the schedule. Yeah, walking. Yep, yep. Um, it could start with walking, it could start with the elliptical. It could be maybe you have a little bit of joint pain at the beginning of your like your beginning of your journey into working out a water class. That's a, that is, that works really well. You can do, um, you could do swimming, swimming, um, surfing. I mean, there's a lot of things that you could do to move your body. Um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be in the gym. It's just exercising and moving. And we just have to stop this. Like, uh, what is it like stagnant lifestyle, right? Like we have to, yeah. we have to do something. So um, it could honestly be the beginning could just be like hiking. I know actually a lot of people that honestly go to the gym in the winter time because it's raining and stuff so much. And then in the summer, they're already so active. They kayak, they hike, they do so many different things outside that they don't come to the gym in the summertime. And that's totally yeah. great. It doesn't have to be where we're this closed mindset of like, I can only get fit if I go to the gym is not true. You yeah. can do things outside of the gym that are going to make you stronger, that are going to, you know, help you lose weight. So there's other, other avenues as well. Number two, what can you do? Love that surf, walk, whatever you like. And then number three, we put, Oh wait, sorry. Also, did you want to maybe mention if you are going to go to the gym, what can you do? like a balance, upper body, lower body, right? Like kind of split. Yeah. Make sure that you balance out your routine. So if you're starting a routine and you're going to go to the gym, you're starting a gym membership, we wouldn't, you know, we wouldn't recommend doing 
upper body every single time you go to the gym. But yeah, definitely not upper body every day. So we would recommend a balance. So maybe upper lower bodies. If you're having, if you're going two times a week, have an upper day and a lower day. Uh, if you decide to go three times, maybe they're all full body, but you just do a little bit of everything every day. So you're not fully, you know, tiring out or fully exhausting one part. So just make sure if you are going to the gym, you balance everything out. And then yeah, the three great. was place and time. And I think this, we talked about this a little bit in episode five with Allie about like places and times and habits. But when you're starting a routine, the more specific is the, is better. Yeah. So if you guys can think of exactly the days you're going, exactly the time you're going to be doing the workouts and then thinking about what gym you're going to go to, you write all three of those things down. You'll be way more effective. Yep. Write it down, write it down. So, th so those are our three main tips. You're trying to start a routine. That's how you would do it is number one, find out how many times a week you're going to go. Number two, figure out what you're going to do based off of your fitness level or your preferences. And then number three, have a place and have a time. And then yep. we, do you want to start with the common thoughts? Because this is something that we wanted to talk about too, is when you do start, there's this common uh, you know, themes that happen or common thoughts that happen. And we kind of were talking about that before. Yeah, we really wanted to bring this up with you guys because it seems to be something that people struggle with on their at the beginning of their journey. A lot of times when you first go to the gym, everyone is very concerned about what other people think. Other people are either looking at you, other people are judging you, other people are making fun of you, like whatever it is, but we our focus seems to not be on ourselves and it seems to be a, on other people and what their thoughts are about you. So a lot of times people won't show up again because they're embarrassed. They feel like they, you know, went, showed, went to the gym, showed up and did something wrong. So they don't want to come back because they're like, I, you know, they're embarrassed that they did that. Um, they have like self doubt and shame just from, from honestly being in your own head, because mm -hmm. it's really, well, we're going to be totally honest with you in the nicest way possible. No one is looking at you and no, one, no, no nobody cares. else cares what you're doing, which is a liberating thing. It's liberating. Yeah. <laughs> I let, let that free you. <laughs> so when I, like, I will tell you an example right now for myself. I have gone to the gym and um, I was trying to do this exercise that I just could not set up. It was um, a Nordic hamstring curl and they're always so hard to set up and yeah. they're really annoying. And I was sitting at the gym for like 10 minutes trying to figure out the right band, the right height, the right, everything that I needed. And I was like, this is so, I was honestly just annoyed and frustrated at myself. And um, I was like, wow. I just sat back because I was like, if I was a new person and I was going through this process, I might feel embarrassed and I might feel like, I don't know what I'm doing. And everyone's looking at me. I looked around at that gym and everyone was working out. There was like 10 other people around me and no one could care at all what I was doing in that moment. I was so irritated at my situation. I had been there for 10 minutes trying to figure this out. Not one person was looking at me. Yeah. But so we feel the whole gym is like, what are they doing? Are they messing up right now? And they're not, they're yeah. working out. Like yeah. to be totally honest with you guys, they're working out. They're in there because they probably also have a very limited time to mm -hmm. hit, get to the gym and do what they need to do. And they're trying to make the most of that time. So they're there working out. So what we encourage you guys to do is just show up and work out. Do what, do what your plan is, do what you want to do figure it out, go to a machine, ask someone, if you don't know how to use something, ask someone and just do it. And don't worry about what anyone else is thinking or doing. Cause no one else, like we said, no one else really honestly is watching or cares. And the asking thing is huge too. Cause I think a lot of people are afraid to ask people They're like, Oh, I don't want to bug them. If you like, most people are pretty nice in the gym. It's, like I've been in the gym. You've been in the gym online. There's a weird culture. That's like making fun of people. They'll film people. And they'll post so people are scared to do stuff, which is probably a very small, like a two to five percent of people. And like at my gym, I've never really seen it. They they film themselves, but it's never been like a you know a make fun thing. So when you go up or need a spot or something, or you have a question on like you see someone doing something that you want to do, say, hey, like, how do you do that? You know, uh, people are super nice in the gym. And here's the tip: the bigger, scarier they are, the nicer they probably are. I was going to say, go up to like the buffest person in so the nice. gym and they will always help you. And they'll be like, yeah, no, actually look here. And they give you, they want to help. 
Yeah, yeah. because they've been there. They started too. They started somewhere. Everyone starts somewhere and you can't compare your beginning of your journey to they're at the, I mean, at the peak of their journey, you know, like yep. they, they think that they're super buff and big. It's like, because they've put in the time. Yep. Which segues into the next one. People get mad when they expect fast results because they have, they see where people are at. You want to go into that? Yeah. So what we encourage you to do is to give yourself like a six week period um, before you start to measure anything like wait six weeks. Yeah. Because Not six days, nope, six weeks because you need time. Your body needs time to change. And yep. honestly, the gym, I honestly, the gym and working out can teach you so many life lessons. And I think a lot of people will tell you this that work out. It has tremendously helped them in their life because they realize that results don't come quick, that you have to put in hard work, that, um, success is not overnight. Like this, all this gym stuff and everything you go through in the gym just really will show you and help you get through life better because success is not going to happen overnight for you. If you're trying to lose like anywhere from like 20 pounds and up, um, it's going to take you some time. You know, if you want, maybe you're like at the cusp, you're like at 10 pounds and 10 pounds might not be too hard to lose. You might do that in like two months, um, but anything anything if you like have 20 pounds and up like it's going to take you a while and learning that day in and day out you have to watch your diet you have to work out you have to lift weights you have to change your complete lifestyle from what you are doing to a new lifestyle so that you can maintain what where you like maintain and continue where you want to go right like yeah. it's just it helps you in so many other areas of your life as well so 100%. don't be so set on like a quick turnaround because I promise you everyone in the gym that you see that has, is at their peak of success. It took them a lot of time, especially to, especially to build muscle and yeah. it's, to build muscle just is so hard. And to maintain it is so hard. You have to be willing to put the work in and we're going to tell you right now, it's not easy and you're not going to see a change overnight. So don't expect it and be willing to work for it. Yeah. Amen. Preach. preach. <laughs> uh, to that point though, is, uh, so it does take a while. And then this is something I also said for some people, they get discouraged because I think it's going to take too long. It doesn't take as long as you think. So what I like to combat that with is my friend just lost a hundred pounds. Uh, I just saw him at the gym the other day, John Santos, shout out if you're watching this. Uh, he plays a guitar, rocks and jams a guitar. And uh, he got out to like 290. And now he's 170. He lost, Dang, more, that's 100, awesome. I lost more than like a hundred pounds in a, in a year, maybe a little bit more, but I was like, cause I was asking, I was like, wait, what? Cause I didn't, I used to train him back in the day. Actually, if I have a picture, I'll post it right here. But I, uh, I had, he was like, you know, probably 170, 180 then. I was like, you 290? I was like, no, wait, when was this? He's like, just about a year ago. I'm like, a year? So, and he's, you know, 20, maybe 24, 25. So he's young. So he, he, he might've done, you know, some stuff that's a little extreme. You know, he, he was still athletic. So he was able to do some stuff. But that's a lot of weight. People might think, oh, it's impossible for me to do this. You can do this. You know, if you have to lose 50 pounds or 60 pounds, you know, it might not take five, six years as long as you think. It might just have that one solid 12 months, solid, you know, year of focus and discipline. And you could really 360 your body type. And then I wanted to also talk about the 10 pounds, sorry, the because the, the last 10 pounds that we, you said, even then is going to be hard. Like if you just have 10 pounds to lose, usually if you just have 10 pounds to lose, that's the last 10 pounds. And that's always like the hardest. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. Would you agree that's, or disagree? I actually, I was thinking the first 10 pounds, you're thinking the last 10 pounds. So yeah. the first 10 pounds might be easy. Yeah. But you're right. When you're when you're on a health journey and you have those last 10 pounds to lose, it's so frustrating. Oh, it's yeah. like it's like they're stuck. It's stuck. Yeah. Like duct tape. Like just <laughs> on there, you know? But that's where kind of like your friend, the focus and the discipline has to come in because that last yeah. 10 pounds is going to be your hardest. So you have to change something. Usually it means you have to shift that what you were doing worked, but now your body needs a change. Yeah. 
shift, shift and try something new and do something different and, you know, change up your fitness routine, change up your diet. Maybe you're going to have to add some more protein. Really, you have to, that, I think that that point, that last 10 pounds comes to a self-examination and you have to analyze what you're doing so you can figure out what you have to change to get to those last 10 pounds. And I, that story is amazing and so encouraging because people do get discouraged on the journey and how long it's going to take, but you really have to enjoy it. And also realize that that man, like he's young, so maybe he bounced back a lot quicker than some people, but that man like put in the work. He losing yeah. over a hundred pounds. That's like, that's so freaking cool. And so yeah. for him to do that, it's not because it's, it didn't happen by accident. He did that and he was focused and in tune with his goal. And he knew exactly what he wanted to do when he woke up every single day and it was to lose that weight. So I think that that's super encouraging because sure, it took some time, maybe for some people a year is a long time. Maybe for some people they're like, dang, that was really quick. So wherever your mindset is just like, know that as long as you have your goal in front of you every single day and you're going after it and shut everything else out, like you will get there and it doesn't have, you know, for everyone, it's going to be different timing. Oh, well, good. We can talk about well, diet. Yeah. We'll go through this real quick. This is going to be the full, it's like a little Bite of what we might talk about later. It's a little, little, a little d'oeuvre. <laughs> uh, what should I eat before and after my workout? So you start a routine, you know, how do I, how do I start? What, you know, what should I eat? I said carbs before, protein after. Those are two things where it's like get a little carbs before, have your, have your protein after. Usually, you know, within a day, you want one pound per pound of body weight in, in grams of protein. So if you weigh 110, you're going to want to have about 110 grams of protein. If you are 200, you're going to want at least about 200 grams of protein, maybe 180. And then I would say for carbs, equal that in grams. So if you have 200 protein, have 200 carbs. If you have, you know, 150, and this is to lose weight. If you're trying to gain weight, maybe, you know, more carbs. But, and then fats, just healthy. Avocado, olive oil, almonds, nuts, things like that. So that's my recommendation on eating before and after a workout. Perfect. And we can dive into that next time for you guys, if you have more questions and you can let us know what questions you have and what specifically yep. you'd like us. Maybe we'll talk about on the next episode on what to eat before and after. And like, we can dive into like specifics, like, you know, what your mm. plate could look like, um, timing of all that stuff. Do you do Quick anything meals. else before the, before your workout? Lastly, before we end, I just want to recommend this pre-workout. I'm not paid to do any of this. This is not a uh, sponsor, but I've been drinking it lately. And uh, I'll, I'll always say if I'm sponsored or some or like whatever, if it's a sponsor, but this is not. I got this from Vitamin Shop and I asked the guy. So shout out to the guy, Vitamin Shop in, is it Larkspur? Would it be Larkspur? I yeah, think so. I'm just, I'm just going to say Larkspur. He helped me out. I was like, hey, I need a pre-workout. I drink a lot of coffee and caffeine, so I didn't I didn't want a stimulant one because it's whatever. And he and I but I wanted a pump. I wanted a pump still. Like you know, when you go to the gym, you get the pump. He recommended me this gorilla, gorilla mode nitric free. And I'm doing a video, so maybe I'll put it on this one. But the uh it's pretty, it's pretty good. It's uh this one is lemonade orange. Does it have creatine? Orange crush. Yes. So the ingredients are it has L citrulline, it has creatine, it has a uh, Two twenty five milligrams, so two point five grams. If you put two scoops, that's five grams, which is usually about what people take. It has betaine, uh, anhydrous. Basically, what I know is the L citrulline and the creatine is what I wanted, and then yeah. um, it has glycer pump, which is I think something to help with the pump. Malic acid. I'm not even lying. It has malic acid, but, but it's not spelled my name, but it is malic. Agmatine sulfate, nitrosine, see the sodium nitrate, so salt. Which helps with the pump too. I probably should be. I'm probably. I mean, I will get more educated on these because you that's know. That's great. Some, some of these names aren't. I just don't know what they are. But no, that's super good. And I like that you actually chose something that wasn't a stimulant because you do already drink coffee. It's I do drink good. a lot of them, so it's non-stimulant. I have my coffee. I've been doing a lot of milk, uh, not milkshake, uh, smoothies lately. The berry smoothies. We could talk. Definitely add it. We're gonna talk about smoothies and all that stuff for you guys next time. Mm -hmm. You need to link that because I really like that. I will. I will <laughs> link. Down below somewhere. Yeah. Thank you guys for, so we're glad to hear. Yeah. You have any, any final thoughts? Um, No final thoughts. I think we covered it. I think we covered it well. You guys let us know because we can, again, dive into it next week. And just remember, there's gonna be times you're not gonna wanna do a workout or eat well, and you're gonna wanna go back to the old lifestyle. Keep going. Remember, consistency is key. And it's all about your habits because the motivation is not, <laughs> the motivation doesn't happen every single day. But when you have those habits, those 
will keep you going every single day. So you just got to get those ingrained and you guys will definitely see results as long as you continue. Facts. She agrees. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. Coach's Corner, episode nine, how to start a fitness routine. Coach Malik. Coach Ashley. See you next time. Bye.